Chapter 11. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. What are you doing out of your chairs, children? Asked Madame B. Minnie gulped loudly, the compact closed with a sharp snap. It's taking in the scenery, said Aru quickly. It's really pretty, like you. Madame B. beamed her widest smile. She raised an eyebrow and flipped her hair over one shoulder. I've collected beauty for years, so of course I'm beautiful, she said. Now sit down, why don't you? Who should I cut first? Uh, don't you mean whose hair should you cut first? Madame B. tilted her head. Whatever light had been in the room dripped off the walls. Velvet shadows slid forward like snakes. No. She tossed her tray to the ground and lunged. Aru only just managed to dodge out of the way, dragging Minnie with her. Oh, come on, now. Don't you know it's rude to play with food? asked Madame B. I don't like being rude. Just stay still. Minnie, Aru, Minnie and Aru ran. Aru skidded on the floor, nearly crashing into a chair. She righted herself and her legs pumped beneath her, but no matter how hard she tried to get to the door, it seemed to loom farther and farther away. Aru glanced up to the mirrors on the ceiling. Where was the Asura? Her reflection didn't show in the mirrors. Maybe she disappeared, thought Aru, for one bright moment. But then a cold feeling spread through Aru. A voice right behind her tickled her neck. Come closer, darling. I'm running low on beauty. You don't have much, but it'll be good for a bite or two, said Madame B. Aru jumped and spun around, but Madame B disappeared with a pop and reappeared on another side of the room. No use in hiding, she sang. With every word, she disappeared and then reappeared closer and closer. Psst, hissed Minnie. Madame B was still cackling and spinning around in circles, or whatever it was or Suras did whenever they were gloating. There, shoved up against one wall, was a giant table covered with postcards, hairbrushes, and bottles upon bottles of hairspray. Minnie peered out from under it, and Aru scrambled after her. The Asura laughed, just laughed, scrolling, strolling towards them, as if she had all the time in the world. Boo, help! shouted Aru, but if the pigeon could hear her, he didn't come. Don't think I don't know exactly who you are, crooned the Asura. Little Pandavalings, it was very considerate of you to come all this way just so I can take your beauty. There's no use calling for your little feathered friend. He cannot enter my world, just like you cannot leave it. Oh, gods, what do we do? whispered Minnie drawing her knees to her chest. How are my parents going to identify my body if I'm only ashes? All I have are dental records and... Minnie, the compact, hissed Aru. Maybe there's a reason Madame B surrounds herself with false mirrors, thought Aru. All that talk about beauty had given Aru an idea. She fumbled for the bright ping pong ball in her pant leg. Suddenly, Madame B crouched down. Her face appeared upside down. Peekaboo, she sang her ghastly smile stretching widely. Aru faced the demon, ignoring the goosebumps crawling down her spine. I lied, she said. You're not that pretty, see? Minnie turned the compact mirror toward the Asura. The demon's face turned even paler. Her hair crackled and snapped like she'd been electrified by the sight of her own ugliness. No! The Asura screamed. That's not me! That's not me! She withered on the floor. A ruined Minnie scuttled backward. The golden ping pong ball warmed a ruse pocket. She drew it out and squinted. It glowed like a mini sun. I'll get you! screamed the Asura. A ruse threw the ball straight at her face. Not if you can't see us! shouted a The ball's light blinded Madame B and she fell back. My eyes, she howled. A rosy golden glow filled the salon, and Aru had a strange vision of someone gathering up the first light of dawn in hundreds of buckets. Cursed heavenly light, growled the Asura. Huh? thought Aru. So that's what's in the ball? Maybe it wasn't so useless after all. Aru raised her hand and the ball zoomed into her palm. Minnie was still holding up her compact, and when she saw the ball, she gra gasped it. 
In Minnie's other hand, an identical golden orb appeared. What the? started Aru. Minnie closed her fingers around the ball. It vanished. It was an illusion. How did you do that? asked Aru. I, I don't know, said Minnie, confused. I just looked at the golden ball and thought about it, and then one appeared. But it wasn't real. Where are you, Pandavas? sang the Asura. Both girls backed away slowly. The Asura was crawling, turning her head from side to side, scanning the room. Aru's heart raced. Heart rate kicked up a notch. The demon's eyesight was returning. Now what? asked Minnie, breathlessly. How are we going to steal the you-know-what? Something was nagging at Aru. Where was that persistent smell of smoke coming from? Where was the Asura burning things? Show me the room again in your compact, said Aru. Minnie turned the mirror toward them. There was one detail Aru hadn't noticed before. The unenchanted view of the room hadn't changed, but Aru's eyes snagged on a detail. Handprints here and there. Handprints of ash. Maybe that smoky smell was coming from Madame B herself. Something clicked inside Aru. Everything started to make sense. Even the name of the salon. B. Asura. B. Asura. Aru lowered her voice to a whisper. I know who she is. She's Basmasura, the Asera who could touch anyone and turn them to ash. How is that comforting? hissed Minnie. Because we know how to defeat her. We do? We do, said Aru, this time more firmly. Keep the mirror in your hand. I think it doesn't just show what's an illusion. It can also make them. Like it made the ball? said Minnie, catching on. Just then, Bassmastera scuttled closer. That was not very nice, children, she crooned. Don't you know demons find it extraordinarily rude to, smack, to be smacked in the face with heavenly light? It reveals things. Right before their eyes, Bassmastera's skin began to wrinkle and sag. Teeth fell out beneath between her shrinking lips. Her nose lengthened to a snout and a tusk grew on either side. Aru almost gagged. The Asherah's head whipped in their direction. She licked her lips. There you are, she said in her soft, lilting voice. She crawled forward. So you see the truth about me, don't you? Well, that's all right. I've always thought the women can see through illusions best. Minnie's fingers closed tighter over the compact mirror. She was shaking. Aru grabbed her hand free. Poor little Pava Pandavalings. Vassar Masura laughed. And you thought you could be heroes. At this, Minnie's eyes narrowed. It's actually heroines, she said. We're girls. Madame B laughed. She crawled faster now, like some horrible, scuttling, mutant spider. Wait! Aru shouted. I wouldn't hurt us if I were you, she went on breathlessly. After all, you've lost something. Don't you want it back? She nodded to Minnie. Sweat shone on Minnie's forehead. She reached in her jacket pocket and pulled out a twig with bright blue flowers. She leaned out as far as she could. The Asherah's teeth showed. Minnie didn't flinch as she waved it in the basmus. Masura's face. Madame B saw it and let out a shriek. Where did you get that? We stole it, said Aru. You dropped it when you hit your head on the table. Minnie stepped back slowly. One of the salon tables were there was a blow dryer. Minnie snatched it quietly, gesturing, gestingly, quiet, wildly with one hand. Can't hold on much longer, she mouthed. Her fingertips were turning white from the effort of keeping up the illusion of the sprig of youth. Just one more second, thought Aru. Lightly, the Asura felt around her own head, careful to avoid touching it with her deadly hand. When the backs of her fingers brushed the two, true sprig of youth, she sneered. You foolish little liars, said Madame B. The sleeper had been torn from his shackles. The rest of us may feast without fear, 
Did you really think you could? No, Minnie shouted. Aru. Sorry, it goes. Now, Minnie shouted Aru. Minnie turned on the blow dryer. Fast Master screamed as hot air gusted into her face. Her long, greasy hair whipped around, and the demon swatted at it, trying to brush it back without touching it. Minnie squeezed her eyes shut, ran forward, and hammered the blow dryer on top of the Asherah's head, and the demon's palm landed with a loud thunk on her own scalp. A horrible shriek ripped through the air. Flames burst around Basmara Masura's hand. Aru yanked Minnie out of the way. Immediately, the smell of something burning filled the place. Brightness flooded the room, and Aru covered her face. Her ears rang with the sound of Madame Beast's screams. When Aru could finally look, her eyes flew to Minnie, who was on her hands and knees, searching the floor. Finally, she sat up, beaming triumphantly. It blew off! She proudly displayed something in her hand. The shining blue sprig of youth. The real one next to her, still plumbing with smoke, was a pile of the demon's ashes.